Now that should have been on that show, but quite frankly we cannot be filling up an hour of television specifically dedicated to reviewing referees' performances with that sort of behaviour, can we? Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome to my vlog about football in general and Burnley FC in particular. A vlog that this week is wondering just what the hell Sean Dyche did to Joey Barton that made his one season at Turf Moor the only part of his career where he wasn't a misogynistic, violent prick. Now, this week is not particularly about Burnley. Disclaimer right up front. If you're looking for Claret content this week, not a lot, to be honest. I was originally going to do something around last week's games, uh, but... It's Thursday night as I'm recording this because I've been very, very busy at work. I haven't had a chance to actually do anything on that, so, if you know, the time has passed. I was going to do something about Deitch's return to the turf on Saturday, but um, that can kind of wait a bit because there are a couple of other things in the wider world of football that I wanted to get some thoughts out about. So the Deitch thing will likely happen after the Everton game next week. Uh, but, disclaimer, right at the start, if you're looking for Burnley content in this one, you might want to stop now. Uh, because this one is not about the Clarets. This one is about refereeing, and more specifically the treatment of referees. There were a couple of things this week that's kind of set me off about how the game of football, and more specifically how the industry of football treats its officials. First, we have the case of Simon de Hooper, who blew for a free kick in the last minute of Manchester City versus Spurs, when if he had waited all of half a second, would have given Manchester City a last-minute breakaway on goal. For this, he got absolutely hauled across the coals by absolutely everyone for basically doing the refereeing equivalent of missing a last-minute penalty in a cup match. Now, did he make a mistake? Yes, but only by a split second, a minuscule amount of time. And when I say he made a mistake, he actually blew for a foul when he should have played the advantage, and it was a foul. Where he went wrong was that the Man City player, who was fouled, shocked everyone in the wider football world by, well, getting up again straight away instead of rolling around on the ground. Now, you may be wondering why I'm bringing this up now when it actually happened over a week ago, and the answer is his boss, Howard Webb, yet again, couldn't resist going on television and throwing him under the bus by reigniting the whole thing on Sky and saying that he made a mistake. Yes, we know he made a mistake. Everyone knows he made a mistake, but most people had kind of forgotten about it. But Webb had to go on Sky, and he had to go on this week, because after all, there were not any egregious mistakes made by referees this weekend. I mean, there was the disallowing of a last-minute equaliser for Arsenal at Aston Villa, but the referee, Jared Gillett, who I'm not a fan of, by the way, he got an incredibly difficult decision under immense pressure right on the field immediately, and he was backed up by the VAR for it. Now, that should have been on that show, but quite frankly, we cannot be filling up an hour of television specifically dedicated to reviewing referees' performances with that sort of behaviour, can we? But mainly the, the main incident is that we had the awful scenes in Turkey where a club president, enraged by a last-minute decision against his own side, stormed the pitch and punched the referee, with two of his associates kicking the referee when he laid on the ground. Now, admittedly, Turkey is infamous for its uh, passionate atmosphere, but this incident led to the Turkish Super League being suspended and lots of pearl clutching and chin stroking by journalists because it couldn't happen here because well well just because right a football match needs a referee which makes it bizarre that football as a whole treats referees with utter contempt now before i start i am not claiming to be holier than thou and that i've never shouted something at the officials i can however hand on heart honestly say that i have not shouted anything abusive at the match official since at least as far back as the end of the West Ham game. There has been a lot of complaints about refereeing standards this year, and the two clubs at the forefront of those refereeing complaints, those two clubs who have released public statements when decisions have gone against them, but saying that those standards are falling across the game, and that's what we really care about. Those two fans, uh, clubs and their fans who have been shouting the loudest about institutional biases and authorities' conspiracies have been held back to such an extent that they are first and second in the table. 
Last weekend, Mikel Arteta was in the stands serving a ban. And if you ask an Arsenal fan why, they will say it's because of yellow he picked up from an especially picky ref for over-celebrating a last-minute winner against Luton. But that's not the whole truth, is it? Yellows for excessive celebration are a thing. So what is your complaint? That the referee applied the rules? And it wasn't just that yellow that got in the ban. That's the interesting thing. They would say it was this ban for his yellow for overly celebrating, for displaying too much emotion. But you don't get banned for one yellow. He's got three yellows so far in 16 games. That's the same as Sander Berger. Josh Brownhill has got two yellow cards so far. And for Arteta, that's not including the one that he got in the first 10 minutes of the Community Shield. But if you do a Google search for Arteta touch like bad, you'll find link upon link complaining about that singular yellow card and deliberately ignoring the context of the rest of the three in total that got him the ban. And today, well, it's kind of worked because he's got off. He's, they've decided that they're not actually going to punish him for his comments made when uh, Newcastle were given a goal which beat Arsenal. And part of that is because his original defence was going to be that in calling the refereeing a disgrace, which is an automatic ban, he wasn't actually uh, using the word disgrace in the English context of the word. He was using it in the Spanish context, which means embarrassing, which is kind of impressive. First off, he's been in this country for 15 years. That's an interesting approach by the defence. It's a little bit like a lawyer standing up in court in front of a judge and said, my client was considering calling you a twat, but decided against it, and therefore we expect his sentence to be a lot lighter. Jose Mourinho, when in charge of Chelsea, reacted to drawing it home to Burnley by immediately complaining about the referee during the game, and not the fact that he got comprehensively out housed by Ashley Barnes. Jose Mourinho, a guy who made a very successful career out of devising ways to uh, um, bend the rules, a guy who deliberately poked an opposition manager in the eye. And what were people's reaction? Oh, he's such a hilarious guy, the special one, ho, ho, ho. The media never called him on his bullshit, and they never called Sir Alex Ferguson on it either. And they aren't calling Mickey Arteta on it, or countless others. John Nayu last week got sent off for for Crystal Palace for two yellow cards. The second was for the sort of tactical foul to stop a break that we see four or five times every game now. And who introduced that to this country? Pep Guardiola, but anyway. The reaction? Well, it wasn't worthy of a second yellow. But it was worthy of a yellow card. Because we see that all the time. And if it was Ayu's first yellow, no one would have batted an eyelid. So what so-called experts who know the game are basically saying is the referee whose job it is to uphold the rules of the game should not uphold the rules of the game. They are complaining at the referee for doing his job correctly. And what is more, completely inventing new criteria in order to complain about a decision. Because ultimately when Rio Ferdinand or Roy Keane or Gary Neville criticise a referee's decision, they aren't doing so because the ref gets it wrong. They're doing so because it affects Manchester United negatively. Again, their argument is that the rules shouldn't apply to Manchester United because... whatever. Their complaint is never that the ref made a mistake, it's that the ref is doing his job properly. And their argument, and anyone who says the context should come into a black and white decision, is saying that they think their team should be above the rules. But then football reflects society. And a certain class of people, the ones at the very top, not the likes of you and I, but the ones at the very top, feel that they should not be bound by the rules. I'm not going to get too far into it, but at every stage in the last few decades, you can draw a direct comparison between the state of football and the state of the country. And sod it, I'm going to go full Ben Elton. Politicians have, over the last decade, systematically removed funding from the poorest in society. They've hoarded it at the very top, where they are already far richer than everybody else, and they've sold bits of the country off to Russia, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. And when people complain, they go, look, it's immigrants in boats. Whereas in football, they've systematically removed funding from the smallest clubs and hoarded it at the top, where the clubs are already far richer than anyone else. And they've sold clubs and World Cups to Russia, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. And when people complain, they've gone, look, it's referees and VAR. And to stretch the analogy to breaking point, what's the difference between a player throwing himself to the ground 
in order to win a penalty and then bitching or smirking at the referee when he doesn't get it. And Boris Johnson telling people that 5,000 COVID-related WhatsApp messages suddenly disappeared from his phone. Well, I suppose the difference is that Bruno Fernandes did give a hundred grand of your money to an attractive blonde American woman for IT lessons. Though I guess they were successful because he did learn where to stick his dongle. Look, the problem is not the person refereeing the game. It's not even VAR. It's that we fans are continually sold a lie that referees are perfect and when they aren't, VAR can step in. And that lie is used to deflect from the fact that managers are sending their players out to cheat the owners are spending money on finding ways to avoid FFP and regulation. And authorities such as governments, the Premier League and FIFA and UEFA are selling the game out to murderous regimes. But yeah, it's the referees who are the problem. But can an incident such as Turkey happen here? Can someone rush the pitch and assault a referee? Or is that something that only those mad foreigners do? Well, I have a statistic for you. In 2020... The reported number of physical assaults on referee at all levels of English football was 77. And those mad foreign owners of clubs abroad with a reputation for violence and intimidation of officials, well, a couple of them own Premier League and Championship clubs now. If you've got any comments about this video, please feel free to leave them down below and I will respond where I can. If you liked it, click the like button. And if you like what I do, have a look around the rest of the channel and click subscribe to be notified when I produce new content.